Hi again. In this video, I will be uh, discussing one of the examples related to a, uh, a resistors connected in parallel uh, as a start, where it looked like, where I have two resistors connected in parallel and another two resistors connected in parallel. But when, when we do that, it is going to end as a combination and we will involve as well the resistors in series. But let's see how we can handle uh, such an example. Okay, now what I have here, uh, I have four resistors connected R1 and R2 in parallel because it's two ends uh, connected directly and R3 and R4 also connected in parallel directly. All right, so first question asking me the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, so in this question here, let's put a line here, uh, first of all asking for R equivalent. Okay, so what I'll do for this one, I will solve it as step by step. So first of all, R1 and R2, uh, they are in parallel, which means I will call that as an R equivalent one. When you do the calculation, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 inverse. Or there is another way when you have only two resistors connected in parallel, you could do this R1 times R2 divided on the addition of them or summation. That also could be handy in, in some cases. So for this case, uh, the total R equivalent 1 for the combination of 1 and 2, it will be 71.43 ohm. All right, now for R3 and R4, they're also in parallel. And that will be called as an R equivalent to. I will be using this trick for R3, R4 divided by R3 plus R4. This way you could avoid missing or forgetting to do the inverse just in case so if you do the calculation it will end by 127 point uh, about three ohm okay now my circuit now it looks like this i will end with a battery with r equivalent one and another resistor, I called it R equivalent 2, coming back to my battery. That's the first thing. But is that the total R equivalent? No. What we end here with, that I have two resistors, equivalent 1 and equivalent 2, connected in series. So let's continue solving this example. So here we go. So my R equivalent 1 and R equivalent 2 in series now. What I'll do, it is now R equivalent the total, which is R equivalent 1 plus R equivalent 2. And that will give me the total of 71. for 3 plus 1, 2, 7.3, it is 198.7, let's round it and say it is about 200 ohm. So that's our achievement now here. I have a battery with one resistor, that's a 24 volt, with my well, 200 we said. Okay, so that's the R equivalent in our equation. Now, the next step, the question asking me is to find the total current of the circuit. Cool. So let's go to the total current. We're going to use Ohm's law for that. So I total will be the voltage if 
divide it on the R equivalent. That will be 24 divided by 200. And it will give us, it's about 120 milliamps. So that's the total current will be going through our circuit then it will be shared between all these resistors and come back 120 milliamps. Okay, that's the second part of, or the second item in the question. Now, the question asking me to find the voltage across R1 and 2, and also the voltage across 3 and 4, all right? Now, here we go. This is really important now, is how we are gonna find the voltage across these resistors after we shrink our circuit. It's going to be reversing the process. So instead of where we stopped or where we end with a simple circuit, with the R equivalent and uh, with the battery, we're going to expand my circuit step by step. And we, that will help us to identify the voltage or the current later on in other examples to, uh, to find. So what I'll do, I'll start um, another page and let's do the expansion step by step. So first of all, I have my battery with the final version we received or we managed to get, it is the R equivalent. Here is the 24 volt, all right? So let's reverse the process. To reverse the process, I will have the same battery but this R equivalent total, actually, it's a combination of two resistors. R equivalent 1 and R equivalent 2. And they both will be sharing the same total current. That should be an advantage for us to use when we are trying to find out the voltage. But how? We know when I have two resistors connected or any resistors, group of resistors connected in series, the current will be the same, but the voltage will be shared, which means this 24 volt will be shared between these two R equivalent one and two. Okay, so let's find how much is the voltage across R equivalent one will be the I total multiplied by the value of R equivalent 1. I total 120, 10 to the power minus 3. And we found that the R equivalent 1, it is 71.4. If we do the math, that will give us about 8.6 volt. All right now also we can do the same thing to find the voltage across R equivalent to it will be the same current because they are in series they will have the same current R equivalent to once again if you do the math and follow the numbers it will give you about 15.3 volts now if you look carefully 15.3 volt plus 8.6 volt, that's about 24 volt. That's the total voltage being provided by the battery, which is great. Now, let's do the expansion one more step. So I know now that, if I change the color, that's the voltage across this resistor. It's gonna be VR equivalent one. And if I go with a voltmeter, another voltmeter, to find what's the voltage that we know what is the voltage R equivalent to. All right. Now, one more time, we're going to expand our circuit. R equivalent one, actually, it is the two resistor R1 and R2. And R equivalent to actually it is the two resistors 
R3 and R4. So, once again, let's bring our voltmeter. Uh, these two resistors, they are connected in parallel. They will have the same voltage coming from R equivalent 1. And these two here will have the same voltage of R equivalent 2. Which means, I know how much is the voltage across R1 and 2 which is 8.6 volt and I know as well item 4 from the question the R the voltage across 3 and 4 it is 15.3 uh, volt uh, across R3 and 4 because they are connected in parallel okay so here is the answer for item 3 and here is the answer for item 4 so remember in questions like this, what you need to do is to simplify your circuit or shrink it. Then later on, after finding the equivalent resistance and the total current, you need to start expanding or reversing the process of shrinking your circuit. So you're expanding your circuit step by step. And use the advantage of your knowledge about if there are resistors in series, they having the same current sharing the, uh, the voltage. If they are in parallel, they will have the same voltage, like our case here, and they will share the current. But we're not asking for the current, maybe in another example. All right? I hope you find this video uh, useful, and see you in another one. Thank you.